Don't get it. So, welcome to my first VR game, Bonk It, which is a very simple exercise game where you use the VR controllers to hit the buttons as they light up. And what we're going to do is just look at some of the blueprints that I've created for this. So, first one and the master one is this start button, which is just a, a cube with text on it. The very first thing it does is just set the level speed and then when it overlaps i.e. gets hit by the motion controller we rumble the controller so the person gets a get some feedback we check to see the game the level has not yet started if it hasn't then we start it we change the text so that the button no longer says start we hide the force field, which is for setting the height of the buttons, and I'll go into detail later on because it's quite a big, um, <laughs> big thing. Then we set the hit count to zero. We use that new value and we set the hit count text, and then we do the same for the miscount. Then we start the countdown, which is using a separate blueprint, and we use a function activate next random button. And finally, just play a sound so that uh, the game so the user knows the game started then we're waiting for events we have the event button hit and the event button missed these both just set the button in a state so that uh, we know we can deal with it we make sure the level has started we increase either the hit count or the miss count we update the text for the hits and the misses regardless of whether it's hit or miss we increase the speed so once we've uh, decreased the speed by 0.3 um, seconds, we check to make sure it's not too low, otherwise the game goes so fast it's impossible. And then we set uh, that the new value, and finally we activate a new random button. And then finally, if the countdown times out, i.e. the level ends, then we check to see the, the game has started, end the game, update the text to say that you can start the, the game again, play the game over music, wait 10 seconds, and then show the force field. Okay, and we've got some functions to tidy up this a bit. So the first one we're gonna look at is the set score text, which is very simple. Takes in the text actor and the score, formats it to a minimum of three digits and outputs the, the value to, to show on the score display. And then the main function that we saw here is after we've started the, the countdown is to activate the next random button. The activate next random button gets all the buttons, clears all the buttons to make sure that uh, we're not having multiple buttons turned on at once. Then it gets a random button. Once it's got the random button, it passes it to activate button. So let's have a quick look at clear buttons in play. It's a simple loop, and what it does is send an event to the button telling it to, to reset. I'm not sure this is all actually uh, necessary, but um, it works well. Then we've got the get random button which gets the length of the array, minus is one, gets a random integer within the range and passes it on. So just remember that arrays are zero base, so we've got 16 buttons. So instead of being the indexes one to 16, it's naught to 15. And finally, we need to activate a button and this just makes sure we've got a button object checks to see we haven't already activated this button, activates this button and then sends the event with the level speed so it knows how to time out and finally plays the sound so we know the button's been activated. So for the countdown we simply set the countdown start value <coughs> that's come from the scene and then we wait until we receive the start countdown event when all we do is take a, a copy of the local 
object that we're passing so we've got a reference to the, the start button so we can send the end level event. Once we've set the countdown to true then the event tick which is running more or less every frame will kick in and it will say that after 0.1 seconds it will minus one from the countdown value and if that new countdown value is greater than or equal to zero the game is still in play so we'll update the text if it's um, less than then we set it to zero so we don't get any minus uh, values we send the timed out event to the start object and then we output the zero value so it's very obvious that it's ended and i also had this stop countdown but i've never never needed to use it button blueprint so let's look at uh, these execution pathways in the order they all happen in the game so the first one is the event reset state so if you remember it loops through all the buttons and calls this which just forces it to know that it is not activated and it's not been hit and it should be its default color so as this function is really simple we'll look at this now what it does is set the material to blue then the next thing that's going to happen to a lucky button is it's been activated and the first thing we want to do is not do anything if it's already been hit or it is not activated obviously set it activated sell it the button itself has not been hit make a copy of the start button object so we can call it later set it to red which means the the button is ready to be hit and we start the countdown the delay for this button to be hit once that's elapsed just checks that the button's still activated, that the button has not been hit, resets it back to blue, sets it to hit, just so that we can't come through this execution pathway again, plays the missed sound, waits a short delay, which is the delay from the how long the button it was lit for if you do hit it, tells the system that the button is no longer activated and sends the event button missed back to the start button object and then if the buttons hit which is when the meshes overlap we get the motion controller we make sure it's the motion controller that we're interested in uh, we make sure that the button has not been hit that we but this button is activated then we set it to green to show that it's been hit. We set the state so we know it's been hit. We play the sound so we know it's been hit. And then we do a short delay while the button stays lit before finally it becomes deactivated, not hit, resets the button color to blue and sends the event button hit back to the local start button. And then the force field object works like this. If it's overlapped, then we start tracking the motion controller if we're not already tracking a motion controller. And when you remove the motion controller so it stops overlapping, then we just clear all those variables. We have uh, an event tick, which is checking to see if the trigger has been pulled and we're tracking a controller. And we'll just quickly see how all that works. So if the trigger is pulled event is called on this object, then we check that we've got the that that's come from the motion controller that we're currently tracking, that we have a motion controller to track, that we set the button to being pulled, we record the current location of the motion controller and we record the current location of the mesh itself the force field and we store those in a vector for motion controller start and a vector for cube up down start which is what it was called and if it's released if the trigger is released the event is received and we do the same sort of thing and we just say no we haven't got a, a trigger pulled 
So that sets us all up for when the event tick does say we've got a motion controller and the trigger's been pulled. And execution goes all the way through to this and it sets the world location for the up down cube force field mesh to a new location. And this new location is set by all this, which looks a bit complicated, but actually isn't that bad. We get the current motion controller's current position. And we take away the original motion controller's position, uh, when I say original, when um, the trigger was first pulled. We get just the Z, which is the up. Then we get the cube's initial position and we add that as a vector. And then finally we make sure that that's within the range that we want to deal with. And that updates the location. And so to get the trigger event to fire, we go into the motion controller pawn, which has all the things that the, the motion controller can do, like teleportation and so on. But what we want is the handle controller input. So previously, all this did was call the grab actor and release actor. And this is for the left and the right, so they're exactly the same. And all I did was put in a bit that gets the cube and calls the event. Gets the cube, pulls the event. So trigger pulled, trigger released for released and pulled, for grabbing and releasing. Simple. Don't get it.